I started with Rathove and Yoli Architects after the award of the Tokyo International Forum competition. I was having trouble with my old job and I said, well, maybe I'm not going to stay in New York. And I just said, well, I'll give it a shot. I'll just go over and work with Rathdale. And in March, I found out that I was going to be moving to Japan, which was probably the most amazing experience I've had in my life. My responsibilities on the job was the glass hall, the conference center that supports the glass hall, the exterior of all the halls, the four theaters, and the plaza connecting them all together. I was working on the exteriors for probably about a month and a half, had not met Mr. Vignola yet at all, and then one day out of the blue, he goes, Charles, get over here. And next thing you know, I was preparing a meeting for with a structural engineer of Tokyo to come to the R office in three weeks, and I had to have a scheme for the glass hall. I spent my first Christmas vacation building a model, and we spent hours, and Raphael would be convinced that this is the right scheme, and we'd do all this stuff, and then the structural engineer from Tokyo would show up, Mr. Kunio Watsunabi-san, and he would have his own model. And they were completely different things. The early space frames that were done for the model became just way too heavy and redundant. And so what we tried to do is take the idea of a space frame and hollow out the inside. And that was the, sort of the mission that we did in the first model I built. And I've never had or seen that same encounter between a head architect and head engineer so married to find an idea, but not being convinced that their idea was right. The structural engineer was in Japan meeting with different contractors, and they came to the idea that they were gonna build this thing all on the ground, two thin columns that you could jack the thing all the way up and then add the columns underneath, add structure to the columns underneath. And so that became this whole exercise also between shaping the roof, but then shaping the columns to how they took the force. It's aesthetically very balanced, but it is literally a structural diagram of the forces that are going into the object. When I first got to Japan, one of the first things I had to complete was the design of the bridges that went across the glass hall because we had to install the bridges before we put the scaffolding up. So we had these big bridges that were big Y braces that basically braced the, the big wall back into the conference center that hung in space for two years waiting for the glass hall to be built around it. And at the same time, we had to build the columns. Nippon Steel had invented a fire rated steel. That was a special way of making the steel so it had a bit uh, a higher resistance to heat so you didn't have to fireproof the steel. What they had never done before is used fire rated steel as a cast steel. We had three elements on the column that were cast. Well, the one at the top, that had to be broken down into various pieces. When they started to weld it, the welding was tearing the steel apart by just the cooling and heating, cooling and heating the welding. The process of how they weld it, they couldn't stop. So we started a two month long process for each column of welding these things continuously 24 hours a day. So that thing never cooled down. So all the welders had to take special classes and learn how to do this, this is a new thing. And they literally stayed there, you know, on shifts, constantly welding this, these things together. The model behind us was being built by our model shop in New York. And that model is actually built in the same principles as the roof is. PVC tubes that are actually working in compression, cables that are actually tying this thing in tension. We had a competition to see how much the roof would deflect. They, they tied the roof between two columns in the conference room, set it all up, and then finally released it. And of course, the, the model builder was right on the money and it reflected about a centimeter or something. The same thing happened in the field. The thing was built on a platform at 42 meters in the air. And once it got all put together, it was setting on 24 hydraulic jacks. And of course we had a prediction, well, what, how much would it deflect? The structural engineer's calculations were that it was gonna deflect about 500 millimeters. And it reflected 493 millimeters. The commitment to get it right of two different people coming from two different ways, put their self together to come up with one resolution. It's the most amazing thing. <laughs>